Hello guys, welcome to Blender for computational design. This is video number four in the first chapter where we're trying to learn a little bit about parametric geometry. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our late, latest uh, script where we did a continuous line that connected some random uh, vertices. And what we're gonna do is control different control the line where we're gonna create the, the vertices in order to make different types of line. So we're gonna start with a very simple straight line that can go in the direction that we give it, and then we're gonna start um, we're gonna start uh, playing with if statements to to make some zigzag uh, patterns, and and then we're gonna get a little bit into using some math formulas. And hopefully this will lay down the ground for the next video in which we're gonna be doing a project which is gonna be the strange the strange attractors. So hopefully you like it. So let's get started. So in the last video, uh, in order to start, there's one thing I wanna uh, modify now for from last last video's code. And Bruno Damasi uh, sent a comment about the nestedness, and he he was uh, explaining me that we can use that nestedness um, parameter in the directive, in the input here where we're defining our inputs, in order to tell it uh, that we we want to take a value inside a list inside a list. So I was having some some issues before with that, and I think I figured out why. I'm gonna explain it later. Um, so that's why I was not using that, but hopefully today um, everything goes fine and we can use that value, that nestedness um, parameter here in the in the in the directive. So in order to do that, the first thing that that it's important to explain is that here is the syntax for for defining an input in the documentation. So we have the the direction. Which, which way we, we are going, in or out. The name, we can make this name whatever we want. That's gonna be the variable that we're gonna use to call that input later on the code. The type, then you can check the types here. And then we can actually set up a default and a nestedness. And if you look here, both of them can be defined by point equals point equals. Or you can actually use a letter D for default, so D equals 1.2 or N equals 2, right? So this is where I was making a mistake. And the reason I was making a mistake is that I was putting the nestedness, so I will put S and right after N equals 2 in order to, to, to use it. And the problem that I was having is that if you're going to use the nestedness, it has to be in the order that you see here. So just remember that when you when you create an input, you have to have the input, the radius, and the type. And then if you want to use the nestedness or, nestedness or default, then you need to actually uh, put it, because here it actually explains the D and the N don't mean anything. The only real requirement is that there's a single character directly left to the equal. So what is important is the order that the, we are we're, we're telling it is not not really the the variable we're using to declare it, but the order that we used. So now, if this wasn't clear, hopefully it's clear when we do it. So let's do it. So in number s, which is the variable we're using, number for making more or less vertices, then we declare a uh, default. I'm gonna use d equals four. So that means that by default we're gonna get four vertices. And then nestedness equals two. Why am I using two? So if you recall, if I take my number uh, node here and I plug it in to my uh, node node to see what, what information I'm getting, you can see that the 29, the integer we're looking for, it's inside one, two lists. So that means it's, it has a nestedness of, of two. It's inside two lists. So that's what I'm putting it to here. I'm telling it look inside two lists. So I could, if I change this number for four, you know, that I, I could have more more lists inside, and then I could look into those lists too. So 
for this node, for these int values, 2 is the number we're looking, is the depth we want to get into, and default can be any number that you, you want. Now, in order to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug everything here. You don't have to do this, it's just that I want to show you something. And I'm going to refresh my node, Control enter uh, Keep in mind that they are both grabbed, the vertex and the edges are still grabbed. And now, uh, if you see the number, the number input now has a slider here, and this is very handy. So now if I plug in the vertex here and the edges here, we can now drive everything from here. Okay, now something is not working, as you can see. And the reason is that as I change the nestedness here in my directive, now it's actually getting the integer. So when I am trying to get a number inside a list with this indexing here, it's getting an error. So I'm going to delete that indexing in my uh, uh, vertice creation for loop and in my edge creation for loop. I'm deleting this, this indexes. So now it's a range number and range number minus one. So I'm going to reload it. Control enter. Number one, two, three, four, five. Thing. We can keep going as high as we want. Right. Um, it looks like we don't have a limit now. But just something cool to keep in mind. All right. Now that we corrected this, the next step is we're going to tweak the code to make just a simple line that's going. Uh, we're going to determine how many vertices we want in that line and then what's the distance on X, Y, and Z uh, between those uh, vertices. So in order to do that, we need to create two more inputs. Input, step three, sorry, uh, three more inputs. Step X, S, D equals, so we can give what's the default value we can say 1, nestedness equals 2, because we're going to be using the same node later, that it's inside two lists. And I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it two more times. So, step y, step x, step y, and step c. Alright, so now shift, control, enter, sorry. And now I get all these sliders here that I can be using. Um, so now I can use these values inside the way I'm calculating my X, Y, and Z positions so I can uh, change it. Now, something to keep in mind is that another error that I got at some point is that if I declare the, the default and the nestedness in, in one value, then all the values, all the input values have to also define the, the default and the nestedness. So if you get an error, uh, because you just left, for example, one of them with the S, um, then just make sure that you actually declare also the the default and the nestedness. So just just remember that. Uh, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's uh, supposed to be like that. Uh, I guess uh, I'll ask later in, in the GitHub. But for now, let's get started. All right, so now... Let's see, so here uh, we don't need to import random anymore because we're going to be using that random library and uh, we don't need the seed for now anymore. Now for i in range number, I want to make a straight line so I could say x equals um, i, which is my, my loop. So the first one is going to be 0, the second one is going to be 1, 2, 3, etc. So i is going to be giving this incremental change times the step on x. So same thing for our next ones. Now instead of step x, I'm going to use step y and step z. Okay, so I click sh control enter and there's our line. Now every time if we see it from the top view, we can see that in x we move one unit, in y one unit, and in x what one unit between every between every vertex. So if I actually change the step, for example, two in x, now when I look at from the top, 
you can see that I have one, two units and one still in Y. I can change that Y to make it three. So now we can control actually which way, how, how long it's going to be, how many vertices we're going to create. We are going to make it taller also. And actually, we could be using Shift A, well, no, yeah, A number. I'm going to duplicate this A number. And I'm going to actually plug it in. I'm going to create three of them. And I'm going to change them to floats. And what I can do now is that instead of having, you know, a, a one, two, like a complete number, I can actually have intermediate uh, float floating point value numbers. So now I have 1.5 example instead of this was in X. So 1.5. So just to keep in mind, I can actually use negative values too, right? So we made our line. All right. So for the next step, I'm gonna leave the X value in one and then zero uh, and zero on Y and Z. And what I'm going to use is the if statement in Python. So in order to write that, I type if i modulo, sorry, modulo 2, then do this. And what I'm going to do is if i modulo 2, I want to, let's say, c equals 1. Sorry about that else else two points oh sorry about that else c equals minus one all right so i start my if statement and then i'm gonna i'm gonna evaluate something and right now what i'm evalu evaluating is i modulo two and the modulo um the modulo symbol in python the module operator it returns the reminder of dividing the left hand operand by the right hand operand. Now I'm going to put the documentation on that, but the way we're using it is to create a pattern on 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 our line. So what I'm going to do is that uh, depending on on the number that we put here, we're going to be able to set up like I want this this one to be down, then the next uh, two up, and then the next one down, or, or we're going to have control about this patterning of going up and down. Um, that's not a great explanation, but I think it's going to make sense when I run this. All right, there we go. So again, we made our zigzag line. And if I change the number, you can see that the pattern repeats because we're evaluating for each I. If it's divisible into two, if it has a reminder, it goes down. If it doesn't, it goes up. So we can change this in three, and then we have one down, two up. And then if we put five, see, and we can start repeating uh, this pattern as much as I want. So this is the way, uh, well, this is one way to, to do it. And also uh, what I wanted to do in this video is explain this syntax for the if statements. I'm going to also put the documentation of using if statements in Python. Just this is how you start it. Then you evaluate. Uh, you know, you can say if i it's greater than 5, then c equals 1. So what this is going to do is each time we iterate 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then once it's greater than 5, it goes to 1. So it takes this first part. But as long as it's under that value i, each time we looped in, as long as it was less than 5, we were drawing the, the vertex on minus 1. So you can combine this later with or and and. Um, in Python, so we're gonna see that later in a in a video where we're gonna do a little bit more complex geometry. But right now, I just wanted to to show you that you can control actually the the line with an if statement. But now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
go back to well I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna actually leave this code for now I'm gonna comment it so I selected it format toggle comments z equals um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change the C and I'm gonna use a formula so in order to do this I'm gonna go and type import math which is the library we're gonna use and then I can use the math library in Python so math I don't know cosine I can use cosine and signs and all these cosine oh wait I'm doing a mistake here math dot cosine then I can type here I for example so I'm gonna get a cosine on I so now I can I can have this uh, cosine wave I can have a sine wave right and then I could actually control these uh, by I don't know by a value if it's if I want to exaggerate what, what I'm doing I can multiply it by 2 or I can multiply it by 0.1 right so I, I make a, a smoother cosine line I could do the same in the x and y values so instead of using these i times step x actually I could I could use my step c right now step so i times step c and then I can control the amplitude of my waves. Now this is a very simple video for now, but eventually we're gonna use these to create surfaces, surfaces and some other cool things. I'm gonna stop the video now and sorry there's no project, but the project's coming on the next video where we're gonna use all these that we have learned and in the last videos to make a strange attractor which I think is gonna be very cool and it's it was actually on the cover of the of of the courses so stay tuned and don't miss the next video. Bye.